Yeah, I think I uh, left it out here. I was supposed to cut it out in the part where and oh, uh, with the dimensional room, but yes. Well, anyway, so let's continue. So let's recall in the part one in dimensioning. So you have your spacing and readability. So your dimension got to be arranged for maximum readability. Okay, so uh, the spacing between your dimension line got to be uniform. Okay, and then don't dimension inside of the object or have that dimension line touch the object, right? Unless you uh, you need clarity, um, then your dimension text got to be horizontal. Um, mean that you can be able to read it from the bottom drawing, okay? And then your dimension tags, they should not cross your dimension extension or your visible lines, okay? All right, and then uh, dimension lines, you you can't cross extension lines or other dimension lines, but extension lines, you can cross other extension lines or visible lines, okay? Um, extension lines and center lines they should not connect between the views okay so don't worry about it. this is just reading you're going to see it in the picture right in the diagram I'll show you after this and your leader lines again uh, should be straight okay it can be curved and uh, should be point to the center of the arc or circle at an angle, right, uh, between 30 and 60. So that's about your leader line. Dimension should be placed in such a way uh, to enhance your communication of your design to the manufacturer, of course. So your dimension got to be grouped together when possible. Your dimension should be placed between views um unless um clear nexus you know uh, necessary by placing uh, some of the dimension outside you know of your views sometimes you might even overlap the overlap is something that you want to avoid yeah between your views uh, dimension should be attached to the view where the shape is shown uh, best okay so you gotta take a look at when you're dimensioning, when you look at your drawing and dimensioning, it's gotta be reasonably clear, yeah? So that's your goal, it's gotta be clear. Um, and people can be able to read it really uh, quickly, yeah? People shouldn't be confused when looking at your design. What is this? I don't know. So uh, do not mention hidden lines, yeah? And make sure don't mention your hidden lines. It's not necessary to dimension it. Okay, exercise. So let's take a look at it. All right, so the first exercise in your dimensioning rule, we're going to practice placing the dimensions so they're clear and also readable. Yeah? Um, so here, this diagram has uh, incorrectly dimensioned objects okay so we're going to fix it so there are five types of mistake going on but don't worry about this that's just uh, you know, uh, from the uh, slide okay i cut it off for you so you get confusion okay so here the very first one is dimension here look at this you know it should be uniformly spaced so here it isn't so we're going to fix that yeah then here also there should be a visible gap right between the extension line uh, and the object okay so that's kind of wrong and here i don't dimension inside of the object yeah you can do like this of course and diameter again yeah dimension for the whole again is missing you have to dimension your diameter of your hole and then this one tax look at that yeah should be horizontal and they shouldn't be crossing on the object yeah so we gotta fix that so here with we are going to fix all of that all right, so after we fix it, we get this, okay? So dimensions should be uniformly spaced, see? So we put in uniform 
definitely space. Yep. Yeah. Then um, there should be a visible gap between the extension line and the object. Okay. All right. Then we put the diameter dimension. Yep. Yeah. Right there. And then we're going to fix your tax. Yep. Yeah. Got to be horizontal and it should be crossing like that. See? That's wrong. And this thing you look at that is just not right. Yeah, so we're gonna put that outside here. So see like how clear it is now, yeah? This is all like uh, messed up, yes? So each one of them uh, shouldn't be crossing like this. Look at this. This is wrong, yeah? Everything because you're putting on this side instead of uh you should also put it up it this way. Okay, so one, two, and then of course three there. And we forget the uh, center, yeah, the center here. Then we have one, two, of course. The extension you can cross, yeah, like that. So that's what this rule, remember? Uh, it's saying extension line, you can cross, okay? This right here. Okay, then we go back. All right, the next exercise is this. So here again, uh, there's some mistakes, right? Um, we want to find find them and then fix them so here that's wrong because the leader line right should point to the center not to the circumference yeah uh, that's a common mistake right a lot of the student do so make sure don't do that uh, i can fix this for you too okay and then the center line should not connect between the views the dimension should be between the dimension lines all right between not like this between me uh, like that okay and of course your dimension line should not cross your extension line so let's fix that all right so now we fix it okay so now we put right here the lead line should point to the center okay so um what you're gonna do is you're gonna fix all of this Okay, um, yeah. Okay, so now we fix it, yes? So here, the leader line pointing to the center, and then we put, right, the dimension between the two dimension lines right there. And then here, we fix it here as well, you yeah? because the center line should not connect between the views. See, this is connected, so we cut it out. And then, of course, here, yeah? Your dimension line should not cross the extension line, okay? So we cut it out here as well. So your dimension line is dimensional, your extension line is your extension line here is we cross, yeah? Uh, like this is wrong, it's wrong, yeah? So we put this up like this, okay? Dimension placement. So how are we gonna place it? So look at this, a 60 millimeter dimension, yeah? It's gotta be between the top. And the front view okay um, and the leaders should float up right if possible and then you can um, don't man, don't dimension your hidden lines you don't have to dimension your hidden lines here and then right there look at that so this dimension where the feature is shown best okay uh, so you gotta move the 25 millimeter and then and then your 10 millimeter dimension to the front view okay so um this is your top and then the front and then this is your side okay so you want to move that on uh, to the front view and then the extension line here is too long okay so you gotta cut that out uh this okay so this and then that gotta be here um then on the right side view you're going to group the 30 millimeter and then the 15 millimeter dimension together okay so let's see all right so now we um corrected it okay so we put 60 down right there we're going to march the 25 and then 10 on this side um we're going to get rid of all right, tan on and then put it right over here. And then you will group your 30, okay, um, and 15 together, yeah. 
so we get rid of it from here and put right over there yeah see this so uh, 15 and 30 so that's more clear um, all right so this is a completed uh, dimension placement all right so uh, let's go into another one all right, so another one, another rule is on your reference dimensions. So rule one is your part it got to be completely dimensioned, um, but don't overdefine it, okay? And then uh, you shouldn't your dimension shouldn't be duplicated, yeah. Um, make sure you completely dimension that. Don't duplicate that. So don't duplicate your dimension mean like don't give the same information twice okay just once rule three uh, we're gonna use um reference of course reference dimension it's got to be minimized okay when you read the rule of course you don't understand it but when you do it and you're drawing then you get it yeah over, over time you will get it so if a reference dimension is used then the size value got to be placed within the parenthesis Okay, and I'll show you too, it looks like this. But when we go into the exercise, then you're going to see it. Yeah? So the duplicate dimensions, they can cause like uh, trouble. Yeah? So we don't want to do that. Okay, so here is a reference dimension. See like how we reference the dimension. And we have no duplicate yeah? here. Carefully read, go slow. Yeah? So nothing is duplicated. Okay. Um, we didn't over define anything, yeah, quite uh, readable, and we completely dimensioned everything that we need to dimension in there, okay? All the rules are okay, we're not crossing anything uh, with the li linear line, okay? Um, and your, um, your arrows, you check, your extension line, you check everything, okay? So it's pretty spacing, of course. It's got to be, um, everything got to be dimension, okay? So everything's fine here on this um, diagram. All right, so anyway, so that's how we dimension. So make sure you dimension everything that you need to dimension and do not duplicate. All right, duplicate dimension, look at this 40, and now we do this again. That's the same, right, uh, feature, right? So the measurement from here to here is again, yeah, shown right here on the right uh, side view. We have already shown this, right, on our top view. So you don't have to do it. So those kind of mistakes, you know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to do. So get rid of this, you know, because we have it. All right. Um, the next one, the same thing. So you look for, are there any duplicate? Oh, there it is, one, see? So if there is duplicate, you're going to get rid of it because I already have 60 and 200 right here. So get rid of that, okay? Then uh, we look for more duplicate and we saw, oh my gosh, right uh, here. So you have to get rid of, see this 100, yeah? So get rid of this one of them. Uh, it's better to uh, put it on this side, yeah? Because we, your rule, another rule is it's better to group, yeah? The dimension all together something that you can be able to group all right so here you can see all of the correctly dimensioned diagram yeah so everything yeah neat and tidy bundle up all of it you no know, duplicates found yeah in this drawing okay all right so here let's do a little exercise so which dimension does it reference so when you take a look at it we have like a 0 0.63 uh, yeah so then we're going to think about do the dimensions match up right look at that so we're referencing from center right of the cylinder right here all the way out and that's already been dimension okay so we look up and then uh, we're going to look at which dimension does this one, right, reference. So look for it if you have 1.25, yeah? So we found 
so um oh yeah i forgot to tell you this uh, this dimension yeah so match up this and that so and then so we go into 1.25 so you want to know this dimension is from here yeah all the way to here yeah so look at this okay then we come to here and look for the matchup okay so do the dimension match up 0 0.50 and then 0 0.75 so they match yeah so that's a uh, if you combine it's like 1.25 yeah so that's a 0 0.5 and a 0 0.75 here that's a 0.5 and a 0.75 then we come to this note and that's your uh, circle done with the diameter 0 0.31 so we're gonna look at it and see like which dimension does it reference, okay? And from here, of course, uh, all the way to the end of your uh, second friends and to the other end, that's a diameter, so that's your circle, yeah? And we're gonna look at, do the dimension, they match up, right? So take a look at this, so that's a two, yeah? Time, so you have two of the circle of a 0 0.25, yeah? So they don't match up because this is 0 0.31 and that's a 0 0.25, okay? So uh, you know that they don't match up. So you have to think about, that's the two different things, okay? This is showing you the uh, diameter of the uh, circle and this one is a little bit yeah, smaller, but then there's two of them, okay? So here and there must be something else, right? Uh, down there okay so when you look at the two circles it looks like very close yeah because it's like 0 0.31 and this one is 0 0.25 yeah uh, but understand that is a totally different uh, holes yeah two totally different holes okay all right so we're done with this we look up all of the reference dimension and we try to understand if they are matching or they're not matching, okay? And um, we also take a look at the, the tiny little differences you know, in between them. Now we we'll get into rule number four is your feature drawn at 90 degree. So that's a right, uh, right angle, okay? Um, to each other. Uh, so these features are, we assume them to be 90 degree if no angle dimension is given, okay? Uh, I'll show you what that is. So like the features are like two center lines or a corner, right? So they're drawn like 90 degree to each other. So the angle tolerance is like controlled by your drawings on uh, a block tolerance, okay? So what does that mean? Let's take a look at it. So here is um, dimension, okay? Uh, example right here. So we can see the diameter of the hole and then locate that position. So in order for us to locate, when you look at it, these are like, see, that's what, what we're talking about, 90 degree, okay? Uh, assume 90 degree, we assume it uh, when the feature. So, uh, right over there in the example is your know, two circles right they're 90 degree to each other uh two circles mean two center lines so so that feature drawn at 90 degree they are assumed to be 90 degree okay if you don't have any uh, angle dimension given to you okay so the angle tolerance uh, is controlled by your drawings block tolerance yeah so here 90 90 and then 90. So we have our cylinders, you know, we have one, two, three here. So you have one and then you have this and then that and then this. Okay, see that? So this circle is actually a cylinder up, yeah? But when you look at it uh, from this view, it looks like all flat, yeah? So that's the first center and then the second one on this side and then the third one right there and then the, oh my gosh, and then the fourth one all right here, yeah? So, um... Make sure you note that this dimension right here is not, okay, uh, given that it's obviously 90 degree. So you don't have to put like 90 degree for them. You can just go like this, okay? So that's what this rule, assume 90 degree, you don't have to 
dimension like this okay this is very obvious anyway okay got it a little bit tricky rule maybe like if you look at it and if they are all right uh, 90 degree each other you don't have to dimension that you yeah? know it's not necessary all right then we'll get into here um we're gonna dimension the height of that cylinder you yeah? know so here okay so here is your diameter and another big diameter of this circle here. Yeah? Then you have a diameter of this circle inside and a little tiny circle right here. And you um, got to um, right uh, put the height of it. So here is a 230 and then this one is your 85 right here. Okay. Manufacturing, of course, is very important. Your drawing is very important. Dimension between your drawing, your design, and your manufacturer, very important. Okay, so dimension placement and dimension tax are very important for manufacturing processes because you have to make that part that you draw. Okay, so um, you don't have to put all of the manufacturing processes how we're going to make it because that's not your job. On your drawing so leave them out okay and you're going to choose a dimension based on the function right um first and then manufacturing okay meaning like you will give a precedent uh when you when you insert when you put your dimension on your drawing you're going to put the function as precedent okay so the function is more important than manufacturing dimensions so we will do the manufacturing processes uh, you will mention that later, okay, if it is necessary. So rule five, uh, don't specify your manufacturing processes with your dimension, okay? So example, like oh, drill it, ream it, punch it, you don't have to say that, right? Uh, only uh, focus on your function. And then parts identified by your gauge or your code numbers, are you need to dimension them, yeah? And you're going to use the actual decimal size of them, right? We'll show you later. All dimensions, okay, are applicable at 20 degrees Celsius for your uh, temperature, unless otherwise specified, okay? Of course, if you deal with the extreme temperature, then you will specify. The part size prior to the processing may be specified on a drawing, okay? So you can specify that on the drawing and you can identify like a non-mandatory MFG data on your drawing, yeah? We identify that way. We'll continue with the dimension rule. So your dimension should be used for all machining dimensions and you may encounter a drawing that specifies standard drills. This is so bulky by the way. What we're talking about is like if a machining dimension likes drilling or bro you know, okay, broaches and things like that, you go by size, yeah. Um so for drill size, uh they're given by either by a letter or a number, and uh, the decimal size, okay, uh is important. So pay attention to all of these uh, specifications. So anyway, what important is if you deal with the machining, right? Machining dimensions and make sure you use a decimal, yeah, to make it short. That's too bulky. All right, so drawing uh, where all dimensions are either in inches, of course, millimeter. That's your British, and this is your metric units, yeah. And you want to use this note. I think I should take it a little bit, make it bigger, make it uh, that way. And kind of get it. All right. So we're gonna note. Well, we're gonna use this note unless otherwise specified. All dimensions are in millimeters. Okay. Meaning like we usually use the metric. Okay. Or sometimes, of course, the British depends on the company. By the way, so some company, most of the American company, line inches outside. Yeah, international. They go millimeters. Anyway, so we will. Um, mention the units yeah so make sure you if you use a millimeter yeah write it like millimeters so all dimensions are in if you use inches then you write it all dimensions are in inches yeah so if an inch dimension is given in a millimeter drawing 
or your millimeter dimension is given, yeah. You know, inch drawing, you're gonna use a um, you're gonna use this abbreviation IN or MM, yeah. Of course, after you put the unit, it's just telling you the uh, put the unit yeah to your value. Okay, then so that's about your uh, units with your dimension values. The major dimensions, um, we usually use mm for millimeters. Zero or one decimal place. Okay, so that's zero decimal place. That's uh, one decimal place. So these are pretty standard, yeah, values that we use with decimal places, of course. Um, when the dimension is less than a millimeter, yeah, like this, 0 0.5. So a zero got a place, yeah, precedent that decimal point. A lot of the, you know, like uh, drafter, they, they, when they draw it, they sometimes get rid of this, you know. But it's better that you put a zero, right, in it when you do. Because if you don't put the zero, sometimes you're going to miss this decimal. And, and 0.5 and 5 is a big difference. You know? So you'll mess up your manufacturing uh, process if you are not careful about this. Okay, yeah? So the computer mistake can happen uh, quite a lot. Yeah? So that's just you know, make sure you don't do that kind of silly mistake. Yeah, this is just uh, showing you yeah, uh, what angle that you're drawing. So, you know, so English dimensions are given in inches. And we usually use two decimal place, okay, standard drawing. And zero is not shown before the decimal point for value less than one inch, okay? So when you do the inches, yeah, you go like this. And this is, of course, American drawing a lot. Uh, so make sure, yeah, uh, be very, very careful if you use your British system. Yeah, by default, we don't really put it. Why? Because American, most of the American company use the inches and they don't want to put the zero. Yeah, but then a lot of mistakes come with that rule. Yeah, and of course, it's not very straight. Yeah, it depends on your company. So if your company is like, I like to put the zero, by the way, even though, even if the rule is like this. Yeah, doesn't matter, regardless of the, uh, uh, regardless of the dimension system. Yeah, I mean, the unit system, of course. And your metric, uh, third angle drawing, okay, uh, for this one, uh, designated by this SI symbol. Yeah, so if you put this on this side, so that's your first angle. If you put this on that side, on the right, is the right uh, third angle drawing to uh, indicate like what drawing you're doing. Accuracy, we don't have anything that is exact in the world, yeah. So everything is, uh, we're going with the accuracy. So every dimension has implied or stated tolerance, and we'll get into what they are, yeah. And tolerance is, again, the amount of dimension that is allowed to vary, yeah. I mean, like, you can vary in between that range. Because we all make, because uh, you have to give a space for the error, yeah. Because everybody makes a uh, so mistake in manufacturing. Because manufacturing, hey, go ahead and do five units. But when they actually do it, it's a little bit off, right? Or a little bit in, so it's like a, yeah, five point, five point one, or sometimes like four point nine, like that, yeah, off or in. So uh, now we come into rounding off. So the more accurate the dimension, the more ex uh, expensive it is to manufacture. So you gotta cut the quarters, right? Uh, because it's necessary to to round off your uh, fractional dimension. So anyway, so that's just a round off. We do it, yeah because again because of the cost yeah in order for us to uh, play with the cost in manufacturing rounding off is necessary because by rounding off we can cut the cost believe it or not when it comes to many 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 yes units that you're manufacturing so every unit times billions of unit if for the small part rounding off saves a lot of money okay so that's the finance, uh, financial cost analysis stuff. So how are we going to round off? We're going to follow the rules, of course. So that's your math review. So less than five, we're going to truncate up to the second decimal. Okay. So you look at this, you look at that, and then you look at this. So let's round all right, uh, all of this uh, to two decimal. Right now we have four des uh, three decimals are given. Yeah. 
So we're going to round it off to two decimal. So if it's less than five, so you look at the last, all right, the last uh, digit in your uh, in your decimal value. And if the last digit is less than five, we're going to just cut it out, okay? And um, after the second decimal, this is a 1.12, okay? So cut this up. The last digit is greater than five. So we're going to round up and increase right the second decimal place by one so we get 1.13 okay and if you have the exact five at the end like this okay whether or not we round up depends on the second decimal so you look at if that second decimal is all right even in this case all right uh, what you're going to do it just uh, keep it okay so you have like a 1.16 uh, then the last digit again is exactly five so you take a look at the second digit and the second digit is less than five right and uh when you look at it it's also an odd value yeah so if that's an odd value we're going to use it okay uh, by increasing that second digit one more unit okay so that's you get 1.14 so instead of 1.13 we increase one so we get 1.14 yeah because this is odd that one second value is even keep it second value is odd increase one okay all right implied and stated tolerance right so when you take a look at this tolerance right we said one so the tolerance this is an implied tolerance if you if your dimension look like this okay a single value so this is also implied because we dimension this way look at this it's different yeah because we have like a range here plus or minus zero right point uh zero zero one right here see that so if we go like this, that's a stated, okay, uh, tolerance. If we write like this, then that's a uh, implied tolerance, okay. So accuracy arrow is showing the accuracy is increasing uh, going that way, you know, meaning like this is more accurate than that, that's more accurate than this, okay. This is not very accurate. So if you put the decimal, it's more accurate. If you put a range, that's more even accurate okay implied implied and then state it then of course these are just a range okay uh, for this uh, this uh, value of this dimension so that's one so your tolerance range is 0 point okay five all the way to 1.5 so this number got to be in between that range okay so 1.0 is in between 0 0.95 to 1.05 yeah so when you manufacture that when you make this little square block, it's got to be within that range. It can, you can make it bigger or smaller than that, okay? Bigger than this or smaller than that. All right, so for stated, the same thing. The range is 0 0.999 to 1.001 because, see, the range is also given to you. Subtract, okay? 0 0.001 from here, we get this. Add 0 0.001 to this value given value we get that all right and that's your range if it if nobody say the exact all right or exact value to be added or subtracted we just go with 0.5 okay all right all right so let's take a look at it here and um so we um gonna get, get into here so this is the manufacturing, you know, here you're drawing and then, um, uh, you know, advanced dimensioning, um, how we are dimensioning that because it's a little bit more a complicated part right here. So you will have to um, use a proper symbol like this, okay? All right, so we're dealing with the uh, counter board right there, yeah? So instead of the uh, um, right here, you're supposed to be using a counter board uh, symbol, right? So this is a little bit not right. Also, the dab is uh, wrong. So this is wrong. That That's also wrong, right? We got to fix it, okay? And uh, here also, you have to move that 90, yeah, to the top view um, where the feature 
is showing the best okay um and when you go here the same thing you're going to use a proper spacing because the spacing is not uniform okay and you don't have to dimension right here yeah uh the hidden lines okay dimension you don't really need to do that for your hidden lines um your arc okay gotta be dimensioned by radius yeah here that's wrong and then look at the center line right of that of course uh this is an arc so you need a center line for that okay so let's fix all of it so i'm bringing this uh diagram back here so you can be able to see it you can see carnivore we fix it by putting uh symbols okay and here also yeah um because uh you have two of them yeah yes uh, here yes two of them right there and of course um then the leader line here yeah it's, um you gotta float it up okay so we float up see this little one just carefully go slow yeah so you can be able to see it and of course we're gonna remove that thing yeah and we'll put that to the top view 90 here your 70 which is this guy yeah here um and then your 50 of course and then we change that look at this here okay diameter into radius because it is an arc yeah that's correct and then we're going to come here and uh, limited space so we'll just use a note right there or well, with your leader line yeah we'll put the center with a little cross yeah and we're going to put uh, uh the dimension from here to the center of the arc yeah the center of the arc and then we're going to put the um, a dimension to this edge, okay, to this plane. So you got 15, okay? All right. Okay, so dimensions, again, you imply the function. So you have to be able to know like, what you are drawing. Okay, so link it with the manufacturing aspect of it because your part function and mating relationships are very important and your dimension is going to give you the clues to that relationship. Okay, um, so your drawing got to be sensible, all right? Also meaningful when they manufacture and you have to choose your dimension based on the function of your part okay the function of your part and we call that the function of dimension okay so here let's take a look into this so you have your feature size not originating uh, from the common surface it's going to imply that the size is important right And you won't get it right away, okay? Even if you're drawing it, the most likely will just put the value on it, right? You won't be thinking about this. But make sure you start to think, oh, okay, feature size, right? Not coming out from the common surface, okay? So the size is here important because look at this. This part and that part is a two different, right? So you have a cylinder right above that part, right? So how are you going to build it? Are you going to just attach? Are you going to like make two parts right outside when you manufacture and and and, and, and you uh, attach or we call it mate, okay? You made it together. So you can use many different type of mating and manufacture. You can glue it. You can, right, uh, use a something to uh, mate it like screw or, yeah, because we don't know what part uh, this is. So it depends on material, metal or wood or plastic, yeah the mating right of this part and that part is going to be different so the feature size originate not originating from the common surface uh implies that your size is very important okay so you have to make sure that you put this dimension of that part okay uh in there and then your dimension originating from a common right side of the part 
So this is a common site, okay? So when you look at it, so you have a two views here, you have a circle view and a rectangular view right there, yeah? Uh, rectangular view right there. So when you look at it here, see 0 0.25 right there, okay? Um, this dimension and that dimension, okay, line right there, uh, they're originating from a common site of that part, okay? because of this uh, common site, okay, uh, right there. All right, so we'll, we'll take a look at into here, right? So here, feature size not originating from the common surface implies that the size is important. Again, here, dimension originating from the common site, yeah? Uh, it implies that the surface is important, okay, it's possible by, uh, it, it can be the mating, mating, all right, uh, mating surface in your manufacturing process. And then, of course, here, you have two circles in your circular view right there. Uh, it implies it's mating, yeah, mating feature. These are mating features. Um, so, functional dimension. Rule number nine, so dimension imply the function. And we're going to get and take a look at with a different example here for this rule, yeah? And so here you have your hub, and then this is your base. Your hub is going to mate with your base right there, yeah? And um, here we have all three views, okay? So when you take a look at it here, you see the surface mates with another part because of this look at that yeah uh look at this yeah dimension showing you a this one c c and then that's b okay so so that's just showing you that this makes a, a really good datum feature because that surface is going to make with another part okay and and look at this two distances right here, see? So th these distances, they got to align with the mating part, okay? So that's why uh, they don't originate from the datum uh, features, uh, yeah? Um, because when you look at it, you know that this is the top view, okay? And that's your front, yeah? Looking at it like this way. Um, so, and then, of course, this is your side view. Okay, so let's see, look at this little, yeah, edge right there, and that's right here, okay? So you might have to twist it a little on that side uh, to be able to, uh, if you if you look at your print like this, okay? So and so that's so you are going to mate, yeah? So you're mating this point right here, yeah? So this part is going to get into this. So here in your drawing, you know that that is going to go into the base, okay? Right here. Yeah, and then I have, of course, there's a two. See that little two holes right there? Yeah, so that's what's showing, okay? Um, see this little? Yeah, see that? Okay, so that's where it is going to get into that uh, little tiny hole right there, okay? All right, so make sure you choose your dimension based on the function of your part. Then we we'll get into datum planes and datum features. Because when we were on this slide, we introduced you, yeah? Oh, there's a datum uh, feature right there with the meaning right there. Uh, so we'll take a look at, oh, what's the datum planes and datum features? So we're going to consider three mutually perpendicular datum planes. So you have one, two, and then three right there. You should be able to see them by now, yeah? So these planes are imaginary. Of course, it's not part. Yeah, of your object right there, we're just imagining. But of course, in drawing, we draw the for you so you can see the plane. Yeah, uh, they're not theoretically exact either. Yeah, uh, so um, but we draw it anyway and do our best, right? So these planes are imaginary, uh, theoretically exact. Yeah, uh, now we're going to consider a part that touches all three. Uh, datum planes. Okay, so when you look at the datum plane, they're here, here, and here, and we're gonna find a part that's touch all, right? Three datum plane are uh, in here. So let's try to find that. Okay, 
and uh, the surface of that part, right, that touch the datum planes are called the datum features. Okay, so we'll go slow again. So the surfaces, right, the surfaces of that part touching the datum planes, and we call the datum feature. So if you look at the bottom surface of this object and touch the, this first datum plane, that's a datum feature. And here's a third datum plane, and you have the surface of, yeah, uh, your left side surface, right? Left side view surface is going to touch that. And then your uh, back, right, rear view, um, your back view is going to touch the second datum plane. Okay, so that's what's saying. So you know uh, the datum features. So the, the, the datum feature is the bottom surface, the left side surface, and then the back surface. Okay. All right, datum planes, most of the time, right, features on a part are located with respect to a datum feature. So let's see. So the features on a part, right, when you think about your part, we have, you have features on that part, and they're located, okay, with respect to a datum feature. So I'll go back here again and show you the datum feature is the surface that is, that is, okay, uh, touch, right, that is touching that uh, datum plane. One, two, three datum plane, and you have surfaces that are touching to the datum plane, and we call these surfaces datum feature, okay? Come back here. Now you're going to think about the features on the part, all right? So the features on the part, they're located with re respect to the datum reference, okay? So which is your datum feature. So you have your imaginary datum planes, yeah, and your surfaces are touching to the imaginary datum planes. And this, the surface that's touching to these planes, we call them datum feature. With respect to that, your features part are located. So if this part, look at that, that's you're located uh, with respect to this datum plane, which is A. Yeah, another datum plane right there. See, another datum plane right here. Okay. Um, this feature, that features, yeah, they're located in respect to C. Your B again, this feature and that feature, right, locating uh, in reference uh, to B, okay? So that's your reference data feature symbol, 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 how we write it, okay? So when we first saw it right here, right, datum, see, that's well, we call it datum feature, but you don't understand at that time because you don't know what the datum feature is, okay? So that is showing you, oh, here I have my, yeah, right? We also call it reference plane or datum plane, right? Um, oh, I have my reference plane right down here, okay? So your holes are going to just go align right in there, yeah, according to the location of your features, right? And then of course this is gonna go right in here because it's showing you right there. Yeah, put this on a little point. Um, all right, let's go back to here. So that's about your datum planes and your datum feature. Yeah. So we know the planes, we know the features, and we know the features on the object. Yeah. Uh, in respect, okay, with respect to the datum planes, three of them. All right. Surface as a datum feature. You know, good datum features are there you know, important, they're functionally important surfaces um, in your object, in the main surfaces that you put all together, okay? Uh, it's pretty important, datum features are for mating, okay? And also big enough to permit uh, for your manufacturing, big enough to permit its use in your manufacturing part, okay? Manufacturing that part. So you have to think about, do we always know the function of the part? We don't, okay? We need to make an educated guess uh, because you have no idea the function of the part because you're on the drawing side. It's good to practice, okay, instead of just drawing <laughs> blindly to think about, you know, to think about your part and like, oh, where's my part, okay? Um, what kind of product is my part going into, okay? So think about it. So try to think of a big picture of your 
yeah, a product, even if you're drawing a part out of it. Okay, because some of the bigger product, you'll be drawing just a part of that. Okay. So no, we don't we don't really know the function of the part. Okay, we need to make an educated guess. So we have to guess it as to the function of that part. Okay, locating features. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna use a datum. Okay, so since your features on your objects, okay, they locate with respect to the datum feature. So, uh, so datum dimension, datum dimensioning is preferred. Okay, over continuous uh, dimensioning. So when you look at a datum, right, dimensioning looks like this. See how pretty that is. Yeah, neat. Uh, that that's a continuous dimensioning. Okay. Uh, you don't want to do that, you want to avoid that. So we just want to show that this part is that away from this, right? Uh, reference plane, uh, which is your datum plane, or this surface is your datum feature, okay? So from here to here is 20. Of course, in, in real life, we don't really call it datum feature all, as we just say like from edge, or from this edge to that edge most of the time, okay? So you can use your own common word, uh, when you get get a hand out of it, okay. Nobody really likes saying continuous dimensioning or data dimensioning like that. We just use our common word uh, when you draw it, okay. So, anyways, avoid this and keep that. And we're gonna locate the features and using the data. So, dimension should be given, right? Another rule uh, between the points or, or surface, you know, that have a functional relation again to each other like here you have a, a two circle here so two holes of course um so when you take a look at the distance yeah you think like oh why is the distance between the two holes functionally important again that's because the whole pattern okay is going to mate with two pins or bows right because something is going to go in there in manufacturing and that's what is important functionally okay um so so the distance between that hole right this guy is is more important than the distance from the edge right to the second hole um so from here to this center from here to that center okay and then we have the whole thing of course 50 but this distance between that two holes is more important okay so that's what it's saying So dimension, you gotta you gotta give it, you know, between the points or surface, uh, because they have functional relation to each other, you know, like two holes or slots or mating, right? Uh, whole patterns, uh, etc., etc. All right, dimension choices in manufacturing. So now let's take a look at it. We have this original thing, okay. Um, but we have to correct it because it's wrong, right? So use that datum dimensioning, uh, not continuous because this, yeah, here is uh, doing a continuous, so it's better not to use a continuous dimensioning because we're going to correct this, okay? Also, no leading zero because you're using an uh, inch, okay? Uh, inch British uh, system, so one moment. Okay, so that's uh, what's going on right here, yeah? And uh, I, I try to get rid of this annoying thing. Okay, so anyway, so uh, no leading zero there. And then here you're gonna use decimal dimension, not fractions, right? Also don't mention the hidden line again, yeah? And then uh, you're gonna use a proper symbol because the, this drill is not a correct symbol, yeah? And we're going to use, of course, a two decimal plates. Okay, so let's fix it. And of course, now we fix all of that. Um, because now we fix all of that and we get this. Okay, so now continuous, I get rid of it. And then we do the data uh, uh, dimensioning. And then we're going to write the uh, correct uh, diameter symbol. And we're going to change the fraction into decimal. Okay, and get rid of the zero because you're doing the uh, um, um, British, all right, British unit system in inches, let's say, because the unit is not identified, so 
the base I'm looking at, we're not giving a zero in front of the decimal uh, 0.50, then we're in a British system, okay? So, of course, and get rid of it and uh, combine all. We need to group together, yeah, that's another group. Group all the dimensions together and don't just uh, throw in like different views, right? It's better to, to uh, uh, group them all together. So how are you going to group? You're going to group all where the surfaces are, right? So this is your first surface, second surface, yeah? So you have your, uh, here's your feature away from the datum feature, your surface, datum surface right here, yeah? Uh, so that's how we determine, okay? And then we're going to fix all the, look at this, a decimal uh, to be consistent to each other. See, like this, three, get rid of it, like this, also four. Uh, 1.003 here, 3 here, yeah? We don't want 3 because uh, you're in a British system, so do 2, yeah? Um, all right, then continue with the dimensioning rule. So every dimension is tolerant, so you have to give your tolerance range, and don't forget that. And tolerance dimension is not a single value, right? It's going with a range. So you have your maximum and minimum size. So your feature can go into that range, okay? And of course, uh, that range got to be uh, uh, calculated, so your part is going to keep its function, yeah? So functionally correct. And your dimension, they're not tolerance. Uh, uh, then uh, if, if they're not tolerance, then they're called the basic dimensions, okay? So meaning like if your dimension don't have the tolerance range, then that's just the basic dimensions. So rule number 11 is all dimensions and tolerances apply uh, to the non-deformed uh, part, okay? So non-deformed meaning like there's no break or no broken or a part or deformed or defected, okay? So if you have like a defected or deformed part, then uh, yeah, uh, uh, we want to use a different rule, yeah? So right now all dimensions and tolerances, we're going to give it to the non-deformed part. Okay, now here is our engineering drawing. Right, so here explicitly stated tolerance, yeah, because it says, look at this, yeah, so we have plus and minus right in there, so that's an explicitly stated tolerance right there. That's just a basic dimension, and um, here when you look at it, uh, you see that that dimension, okay, uh, don't have an explicitly stated tolerance because there's no plus and minus right range in it, and they are covered by the block tolerance, okay. And here is your block tolerance covering that. And saying, oh, unless otherwise specified dimensions are in inches. Okay. And then um, tolerance on angle is plus or minus, right? Two, right? So everything is written there for you. And this is your block tolerance. And these, this block tolerance is going to cover the dimension like this. Okay. Dimension that don't have an explicit stated because uh, explicit stated dimensions are like that, okay? That's just an implied, um, so you just go right into here to reference that. All right, that's about your uh, dimension uh, rules. We're gonna continue a little more, yeah? Go with some more rules. So error built up. So accumulated tolerances, they have error and they're gonna build up anyway. So continuous dimensioning, okay, like this. Uh, you want to avoid it if you can because the error can build up, right? Uh, is it this? We have a disadvantage in using this type of dimension, yeah. So make sure you avoid it. Uh, we usually prefer to use this, yeah, dimen uh, data dimension. Uh, that's because this is error prone and this is not. Okay, so make sure you choose this type of dimension system. Um, so error buildups so are adding the individual dimensions together to get an overall dimension adds the error, yeah, associated with the uh, dimension. So here, one, and then two, and then three. So we're uh, continuous, meaning like, look at that, see? So we dimension this, and then we dimension from here to here, we dimension from here to here, and we call that continuous. We don't do that. Data dimension meaning like this part to the surface, datum surface. This part to your datum surface, which is your datum plane, imaginary plane is right there. And then you have your uh, data feature surfaces right there. So you are measuring from the surface to a part, from the surface to another part feature. 
performance of it too and other part feature. Yeah, because we have the three feature changes right there. One, two, and three in this part. So you have to give that dimension from there to there, from there to here, from there to there. Okay, so now I think you can be able to see it now. Because uh, here you have like a one, two, three data, yeah? So each data has its own accuracy. So therefore you have the three, yeah, inherent on uh, error, system error. We call it a systemic error, right? Yeah. So they're always there. Uh, so if you measure like that, so measurement error can build up. So if you measure like this, okay, uh, your measurement data cannot build up like that because they mathematically you have to add them up yeah when you get the total here it's it's nested down right one by one so here we already have like three eighths uh, error from here to here the total and you don't really have it because it's in it okay in the first error okay all right and so e is just a dimension error yeah represented so that's the uh, measurement e times that times that so that's huge this guy, yeah, we have just one because we have a datum, yeah, a plane right there. I mean, like your reference plane. Okay, here's your reference is one, two, three, three references right there. So it's error is uh, too much. Error mean like error, error of your measurement, okay? Um, not the error of the part. So, anyways, the tolerance, of course, when you when you manufacture the part, you know, also you have a manufacturing error, yeah, so many uh, different types of error. So um, here, so let's take a look at the tolerance example here. So which dimension I have explicitly stated? So we look for it. Yeah, yeah for the oh here there is an explicitly stated you know tolerance because it said it so it can be between twenty to ninety. Uh, writing is a little bit different, of course, because it depends on the director whoever like do this, draw this. Okay, so here the same thing R fifteen, and then you have a diameter. Yeah. Uh, that circle is about 10, yeah? Okay. So which dimensions are covered by the block uh, tolerance? So your block tolerance is given to you there. And we have to find, okay, uh, a block tolerance covered uh, dimension. So here, that one is covered by the block tolerance, okay? And then we'll get into which dimensions uh, have uh, implied tolerance, okay, not covered by the block. So if you think about the block cover, so that's got to be, yeah, uh, mentioned right in here. So that's, look at this, unless otherwise specified dimensions are in millimeter across the matrix, tolerance or angle, plus or minus two, right? Um, so it's this circle, right, tolerance is uh, written right in here, yeah? So that's what we call the block uh, tolerance. So your decimal place, right? So the plus or minus is 0 0.1. Yeah. So we have one decimal place. So we just uh, follow this. So we'll look for the implied tolerance in the same example. So here the implied tolerance, okay, is going to be right there, right there, right there, and there. Yeah. So you can see because there's no specifically or explicitly stated tolerance like this yeah also um so these are all implied so now you know the explicit tolerance your block tolerance and then your implied tolerance then basic dimensions okay it, it's right here you know because that's like see it's not following all other block or or explicit or implied uh, tolerance. So basic tol a basic dimension, right? It's right here. Yeah, I'm just showing you. Oh, there's from here to here is 25, and then you put your arrowheads in the extension line. Okay, so that's your linear line type right there, and that's your just a basic dimension. So that's your dimension type. Okay. All right. Well, that's the end of uh, part two. Okay, so make sure you study part one and part two, and then we'll get into the exercise when you're either in the same class if you finish this, or we can go into next class or drawing. Yeah, all right, thanks, bye.